All right, so I lost or did not record enough footage to actually accurately explain how I set the top dead center on my Acura Integra. So this is Mad Mod's introductory video into how to set top dead center for most Hondas. That's right. And you know, of course, if you're somewhat even barely a car enthusiast, Hondas will also cover most Acuras. Now these are the older ones. You know, obviously the newer ones are gonna have something a little differently. The way their timing is set different, but we're talking about, you know, the distributor set motors. Uh, most early 90s to early 2000s, even late 80s, Honda cars can do this. So, top dead center. What is top dead center? Top dead center is when piston number one is at the absolute tallest of the block without being any lower, any taller than just a very tippy, 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 most absolute top part. When you set top dead center, you want to set everything back to zero. Pretty much resetting everything back to like top dead center. When someone says, hey, how do I set top dead center? There's a couple ways, a few ways you can actually do it. So, one way is going by the piston. So let's say this is the first cylinder wall, right? This is the first cylinder wall. This is the little spark plug hole. This is where the spark plug will go. This is your piston. This is your cylinder walls. You know, I'm not going to draw everything that's in there. But that's your piston. This is your piston down at the bottom. Let's say this is cylinder one. Right? So, this is obviously not top. Very top. It can go. There's so much space. So, what you're going to do is you're going to turn the crank. You're going to turn the crank until the cylinder goes up. And this is going to be with the cylinder being up all the way at the absolute top hitting just below the spark plug well and well, how a lot of people do to measure this is they'll take something small like a screwdriver a long nail something that will fit down in a hole and just set it up in there like so and let's say it's sitting in there and this is the head of the nail let's just pretend that we're using a long nail and then when you turn the crank over, the nail will hit a point to where it doesn't go up anymore and it stays, this is gonna to be top dead center. Obviously this is just a block. You know, once you put the head on, you're gonna add a little more space. So, you know, it's gonna look something more like this. And this is how a lot of people read top dead center is it'll push the nail screwdriver whatever you used all the way up and it'll go back down you want to just go to the point where you're up and not going back down you just want to hit up all the way and this is going to be cylinder number one a lot of people do it that way now the guy that replaced the head gasket on my car did it that way he did it this way which when i went and looked at the sprockets it read top dead center now let me explain how this works he did it like that and he aligned the sprockets. The sprockets have two lines on the side that line straight up like that. And inside the actual sprocket, you know, you finish creating it. Let's say it goes like that, whatever. Right? Okay, let's see. There's a bolt in the middle of the sprocket. So this is a sprocket. We're just doing one of them. I'm not going to sit here and explain everything. You're going to have an arrow that points up and it's actually going to have the words up in it right so he lined that up and he lined these up according to this version of top dead center in a lot of other cars that would be correct and that would be fine unfortunately in this car it is not so I'm going to get into greater detail on how to actually set top dead center in your B18, B16, I think most Dizzy's and most F22's do this too. So most Honda Acura motors from the late to mid 80's to early 2000's should work this way. Now, 
Now that you understand what Top Dead Center is, I can explain how you can achieve this by just working on your car. So if we're going to the side of your car, we're gonna to go to the side of your car. Let's just draw the bumper, the hood. This is the wheel well, all right? This is just the side of the car that we're gonna be working on right now. Nothing fancy. You're gonna have the wheel right here. Now, this is how your car looks right here in the front. Your engine is pretty much sitting in here like this. Your sprockets are gonna be right here, covered by the timing, the covered by the valve cover. You're gonna have your crank pulley, which is right here somewhere. In order to get to that, you're gonna have to take your wheel off. Once you you don't I mean you don't have to, you can just turn it, but I'd rather take it off. It gives me a lot more room to move under there. So I took mine off. Like in my video, take it off. Right? Okay. You don't have to take off the valve cover, depending on what kind of car you have, or if you have the moon cuts out. Most valve covers will cover the sprockets. But if you have moon cuts, or if you have a certain, I think certain engines actually come to where like that side isn't even covered. And you're gonna have to take off the timing cover. The top part, not the bottom part. You do not have to take off the bottom part. And there's two 10 millimeter, I think two 10 millimeter bolts just holding it down. There's a little plastic piece, a little black plastic piece, clear, not clear, um, white colors, gray color. You have to take that off too. Take that off to see the sprockets. And take off your valve cover. Okay. So this is pretty much what you're looking at right here. You're not going to see everything right here because you are going to have the bottom timing cover on, which is going to be blocking this. But this bottom time cover is what you need right now. You need this. And I'm going to tell you why. Okay. So I'm going to tell you why you need this. There's going to be a marking on here. An actual line visible on the plastic timing cover should be like that. This is your top dead center line on your crank pulley. A lot of people actually don't know this, and I was one of them. There's actually markings on your crank pulley for top dead center. It's also markings for your uh, timing light to set the ignition timing. It's going to look like this once you line it up. There's going to be one stretch on the one little indent on the wheel for top dead center. And these three indents are for your timing light. Now, let's say for some reason your car is missing the timing cover. Don't stress out too much because on your block, there should be an arrow. That's pointing down and just line it up with the arrow. And that is also top dead center. And on here is a 19 millimeter bolt. Just get you a breaker bar with a 19 millimeter socket. You should be able to turn it with your arm. Turn it counterclockwise. Don't know why I'm, we have to do it that way. Every time I research it up, it's a counterclockwise, so I'm just going to go along with it. This is how the pulley should look from the top view. You will see the scratch on the little lip where the belt does not sit on. It should be a one indent by itself and three indents close together. This is for your ignition timing. This is for a timing light. This you can actually set by yourself top dead center. So what's going to happen when you're looking up from, from it? Out of the timing cover, there should be this little thick piece that comes out. Like, let's say the timing cover is like that. You should be able to see it. it should come out like that. Line it up. That's top dead center as far as your crank. That, with this being top dead center, the number one piston is all the way at the top and it's not going anywhere else. Okay. So you set this, right? When I set that, you see how these are supposed to be pointing up? Remember how I told you about the arrows? They were pointing down. So, what I did was undid the tensioner a little bit, make it loose. This is a 14, I think. This is going to be a bolt that you can get to even with the timing cover on. There's a bolt. This right here is your water pump. So, the belt's going to run like this. 
down to this. Your current your crankshaft sprocket is underneath the timing cover behind the crank pulley. So you're not gonna see that too much. So that's gonna run back up all the way to the timing sprocket. And that's gonna run across like that. So this is how the belt's gonna be sitting. At this least, this is where it's set on my B18. You got your tensioner, your water pump, your crank sprocket, your exhaust cam sprocket, and your intake cam sprocket. Okay, so I loosened the timing. I mean, I loosened the tensioner. I pulled the belts off on top, kept the little little tension so they wouldn't come off the water pump or off this right here. And try your best not to pull the belts on one side because without these being hooked onto it, it's very easy to move your crank with just the belt by itself. So try your best to just keep it in line. Make sure you check that your timing is lined up still. Remember, you know, one has to be lined up with that little thing that's it. Don't line these up. Those are not meant for this. This is your ignition timing. That's something else. This is your top dead center. Okay. So I took a 12 millimeter socket, stuck it on my ratchet, and turned these back to where they're supposed to be. I couldn't really turn these by hand uh, because of the sparkies being machined, so they're kind of sharp, not too sharp, but it's also got the tension on from the rocker arms and the valves. Okay, so I turned them back up. Now, just because they're pointing up doesn't mean they're in time yet. You have to do something special to have it in time. I made these lines a little bit bolder because I need you to pay attention to these. These lines have to meet perfectly with each other. Sprockets are a little bit closer than this. You know, this is just for reference. This is not exactly the size of where everything is. When you look closer to the sprockets, you're gonna see these two indentations. They have to be level. They cannot, one cannot sit up here and one cannot sit down here. They have to be level for it to be top dead center timing. Make sure your arrows are pointing up. They say up, it's common sense, just do that. You also have them on the outside too, so be careful. Line these up. Once you line them up, everything is top dead center, and that's how you set everything top dead center. Put the belt back on. I know there's a special way to tighten the belt. I think is um, turn this way, turn the crank this way to uh, tighten it this way. Tighten down your tensioner. Give it a couple of revolutions. And then turn the crank this way to tighten this side and loosen it up a little bit and then tighten it back down. It's what I read or something like that. You can research that part. I'm not too clear, too sure about that. Let's see. I think that's it. Put everything back together and it ran. This is a problem I ran to in my car. Hopefully it can uh, help anybody out that's trying to time their Honda, Acura, or whatever. If you get any more questions, shoot me an email. If I don't know it now, I'll try and figure it out. And, you know, hopefully I make a little video that kind of kind of like this explains it all. If I could do it any better job, just let me know down in the comments. Tell me, hey, well, you forgot about this or hey, you forgot about that. I appreciate all the input. You guys have a great day. Have a very nice day.